Aviation Talk, a pilot project launched by a group of passionate aviation lovers to bring the inside story of different segments of aviation. Thank you Mrs. Dhananjay for joining us today and Mrs. Sarada as well. Okay, so uh, starting off, uh, how does AAC contribute to the aviation industry in Sri Lanka? Our main uh, purpose is uh, training. Okay. Training of aviation professionals, okay. namely uh, pilots mm -hmm. uh, and aircraft technicians All right. as well as uh, aircraft aviation engineers. Okay. So we provide uh, flight training for pilots, okay. future pilots. Yes. Uh, and uh, enable them to get the civil aviation authority license, yes. um, private pilot license yes. or commercial pilot license as the case may be. Uh, then uh, we train aircraft maintenance technicians. Yes. Once again, uh, they, we prepare them for aircraft maintenance uh, license exams. Yes. Uh, that is the beginning of their career. Yeah. Uh, then we have uh, a collaborative provision with Kingston University okay. where we conduct a degree program in aerospace engineering. Okay. So that is for future aerospace engineers. Yes. Okay. Those are the three main categories of training we provide uh, right. and uh, that is our contribution towards the aviation in Sri Lanka. Alright, so that is amazing. Okay, so then coming into the recent, you know, uh, time. Okay, so with the Corona impact that we had. so. How does this corona affect the aviation industry in Sri Lanka and the world? The world, uh, there were a lot of restrictions in uh, going from place to place. Yes. But uh, the requirement of transport is still the main key player in the yeah. aviation industry. Yes. So uh, passenger transport is impact, the yeah. impact of corona uh, virus is on the passenger transport. So. Uh, Sri Lanka, yes, we have uh, the flights coming in now yeah. and Sri Lankan Airlines also started operating and they got it converted to their uh, transport, uh, transport aircraft. Okay. Yeah, impact is there, yeah. but there are, uh, say, civil lines as well. Yes, definitely. Okay. Now, so one thing I think I, I may add something. Yeah, sure. uh, <coughs> one of the uh, positives out of this uh, uh, corona pandemic is uh, a lot of airlines, uh, a lot of personnel who are close to the retirement age have taken early retirements. Yes. So uh, in time to come, uh, those vacancies will have to be filled by new people. Yeah. So that is a good thing for, a, for an organization like us because we are in the business of uh, training personnel. Yeah. So we see that in future there will be a demand or yeah. increased demand at least temporary for aviation professionals. Yeah. So our students will have uh, a relatively higher opportunities in near future. Amazing. That's one of the positives out of this. One more thing is that being in the aviation industry, we see that aviation is one of the say like most uh, affordable or most capable industry which can come back yes, and when definitely. it comes back it will be Coming back in, much, much more stronger. Yes, definitely. Right. So then uh, since we were talking about you know since we were talking about the aviation industry and then the COVID pandemic and that how it will be creating, you know, the future personnel and opportunity through this, okay. What would you say your honest opinion about aviation industry? Uh, aviation industry in the sense, uh, so, the overall picture? Yeah, or the or overall uh, picture, the aviation industry as in like, you know, how would you like to say it in your own words? It is, it is uh, undergoing a difficult period, yes. true, because uh, it, if you take the history, it has had uh, impacts. Uh, yes similar things uh, much uh, uh, several times uh, maybe Middle East uh, war yeah. maybe uh, SARS uh, there were a lot of uh, things affecting industry but aviation uh, bounced back yeah. and uh, as he said quite correctly it bounced uh, back strongly yeah. because uh, traveling is uh, something we will uh, we will have to have yeah. wherever it is thing. okay or oh, the mode of uh, the requirement uh, for travel may be different yeah. uh, but business travel uh, leisure travel will yeah. continue whatever it is. Yeah. So aviation will come back, it yes. will bounce back, but uh, these temporary uh, setbacks are not a uh, common, uncommon thing for aviation. Okay, so that will be a very broad, you know, image for the young aviators. So then coming back into this question where, you know, a lot of students have, what is the difference between this aeronautical engineering and aircraft maintenance engineering? Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Aeronautical engineering, when you have the word per se, yeah. 
when the aircraft were operated within the atmosphere of sir, the yes. earth we refer to, to refer to it as aeronautical yes. engineering where the aircraft is manufactured and the, the how the machine flies yes how a flying machine is there the, the, that encompasses the aeronautical yes as a in the bigger picture yeah that is designing and manufacturing of the yes. aircraft yeah. okay then when the man started exploring into the space yes. this aeronautical added up with aerospace engineering okay so these two goes hand in hand but the limitation is within the atmosphere you have oxygen yes. you just have to carry fuel yeah but when you go to the atmosphere uh, beyond, say, beyond, beyond atmosphere yeah. to the space you have to carry your oxygen yes. in addition to the fuel okay. but when it comes to maintenance what you have already developed yeah. right to keep it in the airworthy condition yeah. the activities you have to follow okay so that means like when it comes to aeronautical and the maintenance so it is between the out of atmosphere and then within atmosphere no 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 no, no. it is a initial development designing and manufacturing of aircraft comes within the aer aerospace or aircraft engineering when it comes to maintenance yeah. of aircraft that is aircraft maintenance engineering okay. So then another question that the students are having is between, you know, is it worth studying aerospace engineering rather than automobile engineering or even mechanical engineering? Now one thing the students will have to understand is, uh, although we are talking about aircraft engineering, aerospace engineering or uh, automobile, uh, core element is the mechanical based uh, subjects. Yeah. Right? Now if you take uh, aerospace engineering degree program we conduct, 80%, 90% is uh, mechanical engineering core, core subjects. Yeah. So uh, one advantage is uh, a student having an aerospace degree can fit on to many, many other fields okay. because he is studying thermodynamics, he is studying uh, control engineering, uh, maybe fluid mechanics, yeah. uh, various other subjects which are common for many uh, me mechanical engineering or automotive engineering subjects. Okay. Uh, so the, his, uh, his uh, avenues are much Broader, okay. Opportunity, opportunities are much higher. Okay, so I think that will give a better and clearer picture when it comes to that. So then, coming into uh, how does your aircraft maintenance program work, and then does your aircraft maintenance program guarantee a job for the students? Yeah, we carry out our aircraft maintenance program in accordance with the Civil Aviation Authority of Sri Lanka guidelines. Okay, so it is. CA Sri, Sri Lanka <coughs> is a member, Sri Lanka is a member of the ICAO International Civil Aviation Organization structure okay. which was formed with the Chicago Convention. Yes. So the whole aviation uh, field or aviation uh, activities, activities are regulated, are regulated yes. and that was through the central uh, body yeah. ICAO. So being in Sri Lanka, Civil Aviation Authority of Sri Lanka is the Sri Lankan body which is yeah. regulating the things. Yeah. So you can have heard about ESA and yes. FAA, other things are also part and partial yes. of this whole setup. Yeah. So what we deliver is what Civil Division Authority of Sri Lanka has approved and uh, in accordance with the ICAO requirements. Yes. Okay. So, so the training program what we deliver yeah. is meeting the, the, that uh, guidelines. Okay, amazing. So when you are saying something about YASA, FA and all this stuff, this is the biggest question, what is YASA? YASA is also a regulatory authority, okay. but now, now he was talking about uh, Sri Lanka Civil Aviation Authority. Yes. Civil Aviation Sri Lanka Authority has uh, uh, limitations, that is okay. they are controlling aerospace, airspace in Sri Lanka, yes. activities of aviation in Sri Lanka. Yes. YASA is uh, a European body, okay. right? Uh, European members EU members are members of the uh, EASA, so the Euro European airspace, yes. European geographical boundaries yes. have a common authority, yes. regulatory authority and that is yes. uh, European Aviation Safety Authority EASA. Okay. Now of course the uh, UK has gone out of it, yes. but other countries uh, still will remain. Okay. But the, the unique point of EASA is it is vast yes. number of countries and the geographical area is quite big. Yes. So uh, whenever an aircraft flies to European airspace, it has to meet EASA requirements. Yes. Now our programs, what we deliver, we were talking about aircraft maintenance uh, program, yes. 
it is a carbon copy of the ESA requirements. Okay. But since the regulatory authority of Sri Lanka is the civil aviation authority yes. of Sri Lanka, we have to get their approval and okay. they have to give the approval for us to deliver the program. Okay, so I think this will be a very clear image for the students, you know, the difference between the Civil Aviation Authority of Sri Lanka as well as the YASA and then how does it work. So then there's another mis common, like, uh, misconception about students where they're studying in a school like this with a smaller aircraft mm -hmm. and then, you know, how can they, this working on an aircraft like such as this, what is behind us, how can this guarantee them a job in an airline? How does this work? Okay, okay, it's like any profession, you can't uh, become a uh, orthopedic surgeon just by passing out from yes. the medical college. Okay. Here we do a program uh, which is uh, uh, for aer aeroplanes with uh, piston engines. Okay. And uh, uh, the, requi the license requirement are very very simple. You have to uh, fully complete the program, yes. theory, theoretical knowledge side, yes. and then uh, have a one year practical experience uh, working with uh, this exactly. small, small yes. type of aircraft. So the advantage is you can have the B1.2 license okay. and as well as B3 license. Okay. okay. Now we advise students to go for the smallest thing, B3 license. Okay. okay which will give them signing authority for smaller aircraft. When you say smaller, that is the maximum takeoff weight 2,000 kilograms or below. Okay. You don't need type rating for that. Okay. So once you have a license or you have a basic license, then you start working somewhere, yeah. accumulate experience, then you can go for other types of licenses. Okay. Let, let, let me add some yes, more. Yes, please do add on. Yeah. Uh, now, you are talking about our environment, Sri Lankan yeah. environment, yes. right? Now, most of the organizations involved in flying are operating this type of aircraft. Yes. Very few, uh, yes. less than the, uh, less than five, uh, even two, three organizations yeah. having turbine engine aircraft other than Sri Lanka. Right? Yes. So more opportunities are available for the students to get yes. the required experience yes. in working with this aircraft. Okay. So that is one. Okay. Number two is uh, as he said that the, uh, from one one when you get the one uh, type of license yes. B1.2 yes. or B3 the work involved in we call it as release to service. Yes. The aircraft is released to service. Yes. The the procedure yes. you follow would be the say standard regulated procedure is the same as of uh, releasing a commercial aircraft. Okay. Uh, to say like. Okay. This is this is you're talking about the procedure, yes. not the work package. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Amount of work will yes. be different, yes. but so you have the know-how and you have had the experience yeah. to prove that okay you had been a person okay. say like we call it as uh, aircraft release authority yeah. doing this work so okay. it's it's just a say like ha having a next step okay. to the other level okay. so any person in the industry will recognize you okay. as okay somebody who knows the basics yes i understand right? okay so then coming back as you were explaining about you know how this is like a stepping stone basically yeah. once if you can do this you can do that that's what the overall image is why we why we say so is that we are coming out from this environment yes, and I we understand. have to develop through this environment yes, and true. i understand that look at the that's amazing yourself. okay so then coming back into the work this thing students have a misunderstanding whether they require a civil aviation authority license or a yasa license to work in sri lanka no, if you are working in aircraft registered in Sri Lanka, yes. if you are releasing aircraft registered in Sri Lanka, you have to have a Sri Lankan license. Okay. Right? But in, then if you if you work somewhere else, yes. some, which is coming under YASA authority, then you require okay. YASA license. Okay. Okay. So that then that will be goes. much more simpler yes. for the students to understand. It depends on what the aircraft you are working oh, on yeah. and where you are basically, yeah. you know, which authority you are under. Yeah. Okay. And uh, sometimes, yes. say, most of the other countries operating aircraft to Europe, even yes. even when it comes to Sri Lankan Airlines. Yes. So when you have the EASA format, yeah. it is easier for you to operate, like say, two people talking in the same yeah. language. Yeah, I understand. Right? That. I understand. So, so uh, countries, like, say, operating aircraft to uh, European countries, so yeah. EU countries, yeah. Where it is governed by EASA, yeah. are trying to maintain that stand. That's yes, right. I understand. Right? So yes. then, to, if you are going to go and join them to pursue a career, yeah. 
having yasa would will be beneficial beneficial okay so then uh, we were talking about the aircraft maintenance program over here so then coming into the flying industry so what is the guarantee that a student has coming into your school for flying we we can uh, our program sa civil aviation pre authority approved yeah. that is number one and uh, we have uh, experienced uh, flight instructors yeah. who have uh, Uh, many years of experience behind and a number of uh, instructional hours behind so we we know how to prepare a student uh, uh, for a successful uh, flight test yes. so that he can he can become a uh, license holder okay so we have uh, more than uh, 30 years experience in producing pilots yes. so a lot of people have gone through obtain license uh, from us and have joined uh, many airlines yes. in the world yeah. okay. okay then again uh, some some go from here to middle east and airlines yes. and uh, if you think uh, if you plan joining a middle east and airlines just after uh, completing uh, commercial pilot license that is impossible yes. you have to get experience and move pro yeah i know mm-hmm. uh, now he, he was here adding yeah. on to it he's to- he was talking about the flying yes as, now when a student comes and join us as a uh, trainee pilot first he will go through a we call it as ground training yes the theoretical knowledge required to get on, get into the yes. aircraft yeah yeah so there we have an added advantage we are most of the other organizations do not have because we have the engineering organization running in parallel yeah we have a set of qualified staff yeah having the knowledge on all the systems yes. and how they operate yeah so we get this say as uh, as a uh, supporting each other yeah right okay. so the grounds uh, during the ground training. training the engineering staff will come and deliver some of the lectures required okay. right. so thereby there's a good mix there's a complete yeah. understanding yeah. about you know yeah. both the flying as well as yeah. the basics of the basics. of yes. the engineering right. one or two instructors handling yes. all required uh, subject areas yes there will be a array of instructors yes. handling different different specialized areas so there was a recent incident that happened between Asian aviation about a tanning issue and about a regulation uh, violation issue that we heard of okay so coming into this issue what is the uh, opinion that you all are having yeah. now this is uh, we are in a competitive market yes definitely okay. <laughs> there can be many elements uh, yeah. trying to discredit uh, the organization yes. and trying to take uh, students away from uh, 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 our organization but what is important is uh, that we give the correct picture to the students yes definitely and uh, uh, not to give them uh, uh, wrong information so that their careers will be uh, n- uh, career decisions will will be based on incorrect information yes what is important is uh, uh, regardless of the organizations okay we give the student career career wise correct information yes. what is required for them to achieve Uh, a particular status as yes. a aircraft maintenance engineer or a pilot yes. then it is up to the student to make a proper career choice yes. so we uh, i don't think it will be uh, felt by this organization because yes. our students are our biggest uh, advertisers yes. so they, we have a large number of students uh, as aircraft maintenance personnel as well as pilots so uh, word of mouth uh, carries a lot yeah. so they know the yes. industry knows uh, what we are and what we have been doing yes so that will, our tradition will continue okay amazing and regulatory whatever violations is very say is less possible with us because as i said we have been here for 30 years yeah. and the civil aviation authority had given the approvals and we continue to maintain yes. and they they do con- uh, continue to do uh, inspections inspections and audits yes amazing uh, right. okay so then uh, while we were talking about this you know violations and then you know the recent incidents that were happening there are some uh, students saying that you know uh, you all have made fake promises to the students where you all must have guaranteed them a job so what is your opinion when it comes to this No, we we never guarantee jobs, okay. and uh, we don't give fake promises. Yes. Uh, we tell them uh, if it is uh, flying, this yeah. is what we can promise. Okay. We have uh, an approved uh, syllabus, we have a approved training program, yeah. and we deliver the training program accordingly. Yes. We, uh, for that, we have the necessary physical and uh, human resources, instructors, or aircraft. Okay. When it comes to aircraft maintenance, uh, 
uh, it's the same. Okay. We say this is the program, what is approved by the Civil Aviation Authority, which okay. encompasses so, uh, X number of hours in theoretical knowledge training, X number of hours in practical training. Yes. Then on completion of that, uh, we, we promise them uh, one year on uh, practical maintenance experience training, okay. which is uh, on uh, this two uh, aircraft you will see be behind. Okay. Aircraft right. with uh, piston. Yes. So, so we deliver what we promise. Yeah. So talking about this, what you all deliver, okay, there is another complaint saying that uh, your the, the aircraft maintenance school is not approved from the Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, aircraft maintenance school is not approved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are, I think, one of the oldest uh, uh, fly uh, maintenance uh, in engineering schools. Uh, you can check from uh, Civil Aviation Authority, Authority and uh, they, they will say they will say what is the approval and how long we have been having this approval. Okay, so then there's a lot of misconceptions about all these issues that we were talking about, you know, the regulator violations, then when it comes to not having approvals. So a lot of youngsters are being misled with wrong information that they're getting. So how can a youngster who is interested in aviation, rather it be piloting or aircraft engineering, how can a youngster find the correct information? They can, they can simply approach the Civil Aviation Authority okay. and ask for the credentials of uh, training schools, yes. ask for the credentials of uh, Asian Aviation Centre. Yes. Okay. Uh, that is uh, they have their website. Yes. In their website, they have published all the authorized uh, training institutes. Yes. And you can uh, anybody. Yes. Anybody uh, for that matter. Yeah. Can visit the uh, not us. Yes. The civil aviation authority website yeah. and see for themselves wh okay. where we are. Right. And uh, the jobs and uh, the promise <coughs> of jobs. Now in this situation yes you you would have seen outside the say outside the yeah. aviation industry yeah how many people are there without jobs yes. even at the age of 45 40 more than 45 they are yes. without jobs even after yes. com completing their degrees so yes. we never make a promise and yeah. i i for the person who is handling the engineering uh, courses okay where whenever we start the programs we give them the correct picture yes. so this is what is going to be yes and we provide the necessary training, yeah. we call it as uh, authorized uh, training, yeah. approved training, approved. We approved training we complete. Added to that, they need to complete the experience component, which yeah. he said, yeah. we, we as we are having the maintenance organization and the, for the flying uh, school, yeah, I understand that. we provide them the opportunity to get okay. that because these two completion of the uh, approved training yeah. and getting the required practical, practical maintenance, maintenance experience yeah. we'll only will qualify them to apply for license. Obtain, okay. okay. uh, obtain license. Uh, yes. Apply for the licenses. So okay. that is what that is what we can guarantee. Yeah. We guarantee that. Yes. Okay. If you do, we we provide them the necessary training. Yeah. If you do well, you get to the uh, exams. Then they are getting qualified to sit for the civil aviation authority exams. Yes. Now it is possible for them to sit for some of the exams whilst they are going through the program yes uh, that was recently made available okay. and when they complete their all the exams plus the uh, maintenance experience yes they are ready for the licenses okay. once they get the licenses or before they get the licenses yes they can join airlines or okay. air, 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 aircraft maintenance organizations as okay. trainee technicians yes so if you have license as a as a Release, release authority. Okay. Release, release authority. Right. All right. Okay. So then that was a very introduction uh, episode of you know how Asian Aviation's aircraft maintenance school and as well as the flying school works. So thank you, Mr. Dananja, and then thank you, Mr. Salada. Salada. I'm so sorry. Okay. So then uh, it was a very interesting session. Thank you once again and have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you both as well.